This is the third in a series of tutorials on how to use Final Cut Pro 10's uh, color correction mask to help you if you're working on a project where you want maybe black and white on most of the video but you want one of the items to stay its original color. In the first tutorial we discussed how to set up a mask where you got a choice between uh, either a circle or a square depending upon the object that you're using. In the second one, I showed you how to use the keyframes along with the masks so that you are able to move the mask if you wanted that item to move in your video. In this particular uh, session, I'm going to talk about how to use the multiple mask within Final Cut Pro 10. There are other ways to do this. You can buy plugins that will do a much faster job than what I'm about to do. The reason I'm doing this video though is to show you that adding multiple masks to a project would allow you to control different parts of the video if you wanted to uh, during the process. So what I want to do in this one is add multiple masks this time to the Rhesus Cup. Um, that way I can cut it out a little bit easier, uh, get more of it into the mask and control it uh, a little bit better because of the angle that it's sitting now. Uh, if I had, once again, a, a square, it would be a simple matter of just adding a square mask and we would be done with it. But in this case, as you will find out, the angle of this will not allow that. So I will go to the color correction area. Uh, and in that I will click on the add a mask and once again we'll get the circle mask and I'm going to grab the white handle which will turn that circle mask into a square. I want to click on the outside of the square and bring it in. That unit is the uh, it's actually the fade for the mask so that it blends in with all around the mask and then I will reposition this mask so that I am able to shrink it and maybe get close to the size that I want. In this particular case I might even turn it a bit so that I can pick up certain parts of this unit. Okay, as we see here now I'm going up to the shadow and over to the edges I think I will change the angle enough but as you can see from the mask for sure this one mask will not cover the item that we are trying now to mask out so now what I want to do is add another mask that will help I guess get as much of the uh, much of this Reese's cup as we can so I'll go back to the correction one and this time I'll add a second mask and go through the process of changing it so that it will help fit in with the other mask. Now this takes a little bit more time, I'll tell you that now. However, if you don't have anything else to work with, then you'll find that this could help you out in some circumstances when you are editing. And I want to move this one around a little bit more this way and move it out to the edges. And as you can see, it's overlapping into the wood area, which is what I don't want. So I will also change the size of it so that it may fit a little bit better that way. Okay. And you have to experiment with this when you're doing I guess when you're blending and getting the information that you need, kind of moving it around to see which is going to be the best fit for you. And I'm going to add a third mask. And I'll place it across the top. That looks fine for the moment here. But I know we've got some other missing parts. 
And 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 here's a check for you. Let's let's go ahead and go to the color correction. And then with this arrow on the right hand side, you can show the corrections that you want to make. And in my case, I want to look at the mask and everything outside the mask. I want to control everything outside that mask in terms of saturation because I'd like for this video to be black and white except for the Reese's cup. And by me using the saturation, I'm able to bring down all of the parts that are not included within the mask. And that also will help you to see what parts you need to add in terms of a mask. I will now go back to the mask and look at mask number two and call it up uh, and see if we can't stretch it a bit more and maybe angle it a different way as a way of helping to gather some more of that particular item. And we have a little area here and a little area on the side, so I'm going to add a couple more masks. Now what I found out is, is that once you add several masks, they take on whatever your first uh, setup is for the first mask that you use, so that's kind of easy. Now, I'll drag it along here and align it to see if we got the right angle. Take a little bit more of that gray out on the side there. On the left hand side, I will add another mask in the same way. And I will bring this in to the edge. And you can see it's still showing a little bit on the edge. And I'll keep turning it to get as much of it as we can. And as it looks right now, it looks like other than we have a corner here on the left hand side and a slight corner here. In this particular video, this, this clip is only two seconds long, so maybe it won't show up, but if you wanted to, we could even add another mask. And I'm pulling in on the sliders to get the size that I want so that we are able to mask those items and set them up the best way we can at this particular point. That's looking pretty good now in terms of the majority of the information. Okay, so now we've got our mask and as you can see, all of the items that are there are in black and white except for where we have masked the item. And that's an idea of how you could use multiple masks if you needed to, to mask an item that may not be either a square or a circle while you're working through it. If this is the only way to do it, at least you have a way to make a mask and give you an option to be more creative in your particular video.